Canada, trucks are the largest selling segment overall. But if we take pickups out of the equation, then this, the Toyota RAV4, would be the best selling vehicle in Canada. Last year in 2022, it was outsold only by the Ford F-150 and Ram pickup. And the same thing happened in 2021, 2020, and 2019 too. If that many people are buying them, then there has to be a reason. I'm here with the 2023 RAV4 to find out what it is. The RAV4 comes as a conventional model, as a hybrid, which is what I'm driving, and also as a plug-in hybrid. While Toyota doesn't break down the individual sales figures for each type, I'm guessing the hybrid does well for itself. The regular RAV4 comes in five trim levels and the plug-in in three, while the hybrid comes in eight. I'm in the XLE, one up from the base LE. Mine starts at $37,990 before taxes and delivery fees. Mine is further option with the Woodland Edition, a new offering for 2023 that adds $2,190 to the price. For that, you get an off-road tuned suspension, 120 volt power outlet, roof rail crossbars, LED fog lamps, and Woodland themed mats, plus 18 inch bronze colored wheels. The XLE Hybrid's other new for 2023 package is the Premium, which adds 19 inch wheels, leather look upholstery, and other features. There are some other 2023 additions for the RAV4 lineup as well. All models come with Toyota Multimedia, which includes wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and available subscription-based features such as remote access and a virtual assistant. The driver assist safety features are improved too. Every trim includes adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, and emergency front braking. New for this year, the RAV4 will break if you're turning left and haven't noticed oncoming traffic. It'll do the same if you're turning left or right at an intersection when a pedestrian is in your path. All RAV4 models use a 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine. In the hybrid, it makes 176 horsepower on its own, plus 163 foot-pounds of torque. There are two electric motors to assist it, and everything working together makes 219 horsepower. The vehicle runs primarily in front wheel drive, but if you need extra traction, there's a third electric motor that drives the rear wheels as required. It's not a powerhouse and the engine can get a bit noisy on acceleration, but overall it's fine for everyday driving and highway passing. The hybrid system automatically switches between gasoline, electricity, or a combination of the two, depending on driving conditions. There's a button for EV mode, meaning electric vehicle, which keeps it on battery only at low speeds. But it's pretty much pointless since the system does that anyway, and EV mode shuts off if you exceed that low speed. The driving experience is as you'd expect for a daily commuter. The steering is smooth, if a bit light, the ride is comfortable, the turning circle is tight, and visibility is good. The battery recharges through regenerative braking, feeding power back in from the energy that's otherwise wasted while you're slowing down. That's the big question here, which RAV4 do you get? The conventional RAV4 starts around 32,600. Depending on the trim level, it's between 1,600 and 2,260 to move up to a comparable hybrid version. That is an extra chunk of change, but I think the hybrid is the sweet spot here. The hybrid is rated at six liters per 100 kilometers in combined city highway driving compared to 8.5 in the regular RAV4. I prefer the smoothness of the hybrid powertrain and its efficiency. I recently drove the regular RAV4 and every time I slowed down, I felt like I was wasting all that uncaptured energy. The next step is the RAV4 Prime plug-in hybrid or PHEV. It has the same hybrid powertrain as my tester here, but you can plug it in and then drive for about 68 kilometers on electricity alone. Once that depletes, it reverts to the same gas electric operation as the RAV4 hybrid, so you're not stuck if you can't recharge. If you plug it in regularly, you might use no gas at all, but it's $10,000 to $15,000 more than the RAV4 hybrid. For me, the hybrid is where it's at. The RAV4's interior is comfortable with good headroom and roomy front seats. The rear chairs have a bit less legroom than some competitors, such as the Honda CRV and Hyundai Tucson hybrids, but it's still fine back there for most people. The controls are simple and easy to use, with big dials for the temperature and hard buttons for most of the controls. 
The infotainment screen is equally intuitive, although it can be slow to respond when it's cold. A power lift gate is standard on all but the base LE, and the cargo compartment is about mid-pack for size with its compact SUV competitors. The RAV4 Hybrid is competitively priced, it's comfortable, it's nice to drive, it's practical, it scores well in reliability surveys, and it's fuel efficient. It's not spectacular, but as a daily driver, it does just about everything right. Why is it so popular? I think I've found the answer. For driving.ca, I'm Jill McIntosh. And for more news and reviews on SUVs and everything else, be sure to visit us on Instagram and Twitter.